Sakya Muni Buddha, born in India around the 500 before Common Era, was a true revolutionary in that he was able to follow his own beliefs and ideas to achieve a higher truth, rather than just follow in the footsteps and paths of others. In this way, he can be compared with some prominent existentialists such as Dostoevsky, Kierkegaard, and Nietzsche among others, in that they all abandoned societal norms in order to focus in on their own individual to gain a clearer understanding of their world. In the following videography, I will focus on this practice of breaking off from the crowd in search of a higher truth by examining the beliefs of Fyodor Dostoevsky and of Soren Kierkegaard in comparison with Buddhist theory. I will delve into their ideas of individuality, deceit, consciousness, and truth, and how it relates to their perception of the crowd. When the Buddha, known as Siddhartha Gautama, was born, it was predicted that he would either grow up to save humanity or become another great king. His father tried to shelter him of all suffering, including sickness, poverty, death, and sadness, so that he would not be tempted to help humanity. Eventually, Siddhartha came into contact with all of these things and decided to strip himself of all representations of wealth, fame, power, prestige, and privilege, and abandoned his comfortable life in the palace in search for a higher truth. He encountered a crowd of ascetic monks who practiced asceticism in the woods and decided to practice with them for a while. Soon after, Siddhartha realized that the path the crowd followed did have some validity and truth, but it did not possess the ultimate truth. So he decided to leave the crowd of ascetics in pursuit of his own belief, marking the second major event in his life in which he tore off from the crowd and explored the path contrary to popular acceptance. Siddhartha then isolated himself from the crowd without any feeling of regret and focused in on his own individual and consciousness, tearing away any shred of artificiality and deceit in order to know the truth. One night under the Bodhi tree, he achieved spiritual awakening through intense concentration and meditation. He then set out to share his understanding and wisdom with others. First, going back to teach the ascetic monks. They managed to forgive him and achieved enlightenment immediately, thus proving that making sacrifices for the benefit of one's own beliefs is perfectly legitimate. Following that, Siddhartha made a speech to the Kalama people. He told them not to blindly trust any ancient texts as truth nor use scriptures such as the Holy Vedas as a final authority to achieve enlightenment. One can only trust one's own self, and one's own self can only be known through direct, personal experiences and meditation. Fast forward a little over 2,000 years, and we see existentialists beginning to gain prominence in Europe. Soren Kierkegaard was born in Denmark on May 5, 1813. He grew up in a very religious household and was urged by his father to become a pastor. Instead, he ended up earning a PhD equivalent in philosophy. He was a man deeply influenced by the power of women and his love affair with a woman named Regine Olsen would forever change his life and everything he ever wrote about. Although he was engaged to her at one point, he became rather melancholy and broke off the marriage. She then married someone else, disheartening him even more. Either or, fear and trembling, and repetition are all works by Kierkegaard which express lament for his sorrow over his love for Regine. Though he did write a great deal, he had no desire to be famous. In fact, he avoided fame. 
He is usually referred to as the first existentialist philosopher, having bridged the gap between Hegelian philosophy and existentialism. Kierkegaard is also the first to have written about the idea of taking a leap of faith, and that in order to have faith, one must also possess a certain degree of doubt. Just as the Buddha left his original spiritual crowds, Kierkegaard eventually managed to tear off from his religion, having led a literary attack on the church. He died on November 11, 1855, after collapsing in the street. As a testament to his devotion to his own ideas and beliefs, he refused to receive communion from the pastor as he could not regard this as the truth. Until his dying day, Kierkegaard stood up for his beliefs and against the flow of the crowd. Born in the same generation as Kierkegaard, Dostoevsky was born in the rough neighborhoods of Moscow, Russia in 1821. His family was very harsh and his father an alcoholic. In addition, his father was a doctor who worked at a hospital nearby his home, leaving the surrounding of young Dostoevsky's neighborhood scattered with landmarks that included a cemetery for criminals, a lunatic asylum, and an orphanage for abandoned infants. These patients and living examples of human suffering tormented young Dostoevsky and would forever have a great impact on his adult life. Even with all his childhood troubles, Dostoevsky was determined to be influential and famous. This is the first indication of his will to tear himself away from the norm. He found his first outlet through the Russian military school, where he became a lieutenant in the army. He tried to further his fame by writing for periodicals. At age 24, he had his first big success by writing an article called Poor Folk, which was later to be published as a book. Unfortunately, he had very little writing success after this and was arrested at age 28 for engaging in revolutionary activity against Tsar Nikolai I. This arrest marked a pivotal point in Dostoevsky's life and in the style of his literature. He was sentenced to death as he was linked to the Petrashevsky Circle, a liberal intellectual group. This was another indication that Dostoevsky was detaching himself from the norm, this time in the political realm. He unknowingly went through a mock execution on the day he was to be shot to death which really added to his, his insanity. His next four years were spent in exile in Omsk, Siberia, and it was during that time in which he really began to foster traditional Russian values and become adamantly anti-Western. By the time of his death in 1881, he was hailed by Russians as being one of the best writers of all times and glorified as an almost prophetic, mystical writer. Although Kierkegaard and Dostoevsky grew up in quite different societies, their experience of, of hardship led them to both question some fundamental aspects of the nature of life and of the human spirit, especially in examining the individual in relation to the crowd. On the point of consciousness, both novelists acknowledge that consciously isolating oneself from the crowd can allow for inherent satisfaction. Kierkegaard notes that if one is conscious of oneself and one's surroundings, then it is possible to see that the crowd renders the 